started with this 41 by 17 inch frame that I had picked up at a garage sale. They were asking $5 and I actually got it for three. I flipped it over. I took all those little clips out of the back and then I removed the backing and the glass. And then I took Elmer's glue and I put it around the perimeter of the back of the frame where the glass would sit. Then I replaced the glass and put Elmer's glue around one more time. Normally I would say it serves two purposes. It helps to hold the glass in place and it also helps to prevent resin leaks. In this case, the glass is so heavy, it's really only gonna work as a seal. And then we're gonna go ahead and put painter's tape around the perimeter after it dries completely and that will help hold the glass in place. After you pour the resin and it cures, the resin will permanently adhere the glass to the frame. So next on the back of the glass, I cut out a pattern for a train and I lay it out on the back of the glass. And once I'm happy with the way that is and the glue has totally dried, then I take my painter's tape and I put it around the perimeter of the back of the frame. And this will help hold the piece of glass in place as well as help um, work as a sealant to prevent resin leaks. Once you pour the resin and the resin cures, that resin will permanently adhere the glass to the frame. So next, I'm trying to cut out a piece of glass to use for part of the train. Most of the train I'm going to use some Hobby Lobby glass, but I just wanted this part to kind of stick out a little bit. And I'm using a glass vase that I had picked up at um, Goodwill quite a long time ago. And I'm just trying to nip it with the nippers to make one long straight piece, but it ends up uh, breaking off a little bit too short, so I end up having to make two pieces instead of one. And in a minute, you'll be able to see exactly where it's going on the train. So you can see here that it's not quite long enough so I have to add one more piece on there and um, to make it the length that I want it. I tried to make it one long piece but it kept on breaking off so this was my last resort to make it into two pieces. And then I take it out to the garage and I go ahead and sand the edges to make them look a little bit smoother and to take the sharp edges off. So next, I had bought this strand of garland from a store we have by us called At Home. And I'm going to use those for the tires. So I just take them off the string, and then I use clear Elmer's glue and put them down um, in a row, just like they were on the garland. And I actually left those little red balls in between. I thought they just looked real pretty. Here you can see I've already dumped some glass out onto the train because I was trying to find the rhinestone chains that would look good or match with it. So this glass is called Mosaic Accents and it's found at Hobby Lobby back in the area where the stained glass is. It's about $3.99 to $5.99 a bag depending on the color. I just learned this weekend that red glass is more expensive. I, I never knew that. So these rhinestone chains are rhinestone chains I had picked up on Amazon and I used green to go around the green glass and red to go around the red glass and they are four millimeter rhinestone chains. And what I do is I put Elmer's glue, clear Elmer's glue around the outline and set the rhinestone chains right on top of them. And it's very simple to do. And then I move over to the engine and fill all that area in also, <clears throat> or outline the area, I should say. So that little Santa Claus there, I want him to look like he's in the train waving to people. So I actually cut his legs off <laughs> and then put him down there. I'm going to put him down there like he's looking out uh, or standing outside the door waving to everybody. You do not need to worry about the clear Elmer's glue getting in other areas. Um, once the resin goes over the top of it, it will totally disappear. That's why it's important to use clear Elmer's glue on these projects with resin. Next, I added the rest of the glass, and I did end up putting some Elmer's glue under it and on top of it just to hold the glass in place 
because I wasn't sure what I was going to put on top of the glass and whether it was going to end up moving around. And I thought it would probably take me a couple more days to finish the project. And I just wanted all the glass adhered really well down to the glass. Do use clear Elmer's glue. Make sure it is totally dry before you put the resin on. Next, I took the paper backing off. What I was using is a template for the train because you're better able to see the glass, whether you have full coverage or not, once you take the template off of the back. Next, I had picked up these little ornaments. They're little kids waving, and these were also from Hobby Lobby. And for each of them, I had to cut their legs off, and I had to take the screws out of their heads. <laughs> that was where the hangers were and um, put them as if they were sitting in the cart waving and I thought they were just adorable. I thought they turned out real cute. And then I also got these whimsical um, things that you're supposed to put on your Christmas trees. I guess you stick them in. They're like picks. They're giant picks. And honestly, I had a whole bunch of different ones and I messed around with these for about two days trying to decide exactly what I wanted to do and where I wanted to put them and it just was a process and in the process it made so much glitter all over this um, glass here it took me quite a while to clean it up. To clean it up I worked in one area at a time, removed the pieces, used my painter's tape to pick up all the glitter and glass and whatever else had gotten on there. And then I poured some rubbing alcohol on it and a soft cloth that didn't leave anything behind and just cleaned up the area. And like I said, I just did one area at a time because I didn't want to forget where I had put everything. And another suggestion somebody had made at one time was to take a picture of it before you remove the stuff. Um, that way you remember where you had it before you put it back on. I had found this chunky necklace at a garage sale and I thought that would be perfect to lay at the bottom. I did cut it in half and half of the beads went flying all over the place. So um, <laughs> I was able to keep part of it together that way and just move it down. And then I, what I ended up doing was restringing whatever had fallen off. That had a knot in it, I guess, that I had to redo. But um, I put some Elmer's glue down to kind of hold it in place because I was afraid if they fell off, they would start falling over and it would just be a, a big mess. But anyway, like I said, the, uh, the at the very end there, what I did was I just uh, picked them up and strung them together and then put them down at the end. And this really was like a 20 minute process, even though it looks like I did it real fast. Now it's ready for the resin. The resin I'm going to use for this project is Let's Resin Resin. It's a one to one ratio resin that you mix slowly in a cup, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom. The slower you mix it, the less bubbles you will get. I wear gloves. I use a respirator. I do it in a well ventilated room. Um, of course, the best place to do it would be outside, but, um, you know, weather doesn't always permit that. I really like this resin for glass on glass, but you can't use it on canvas as far as I know because it does leave fish eyes. Let the resin sit for about 15 minutes. It allows the bubbles to come to the top and some of them will dissipate. Then I always start by putting the resin or drizzling the resin over the glass and everything that I have on top of the glass. And then I take the resin and I uh, put it along the sides and up into the corners before I start smoothing it out. And then I take either my spoon or this other little um, silicone tool and push it up along the edges and into the corners to make sure all the areas are covered, trying to get in between all of the elements on the board there and uh, just making sure that everything is covered really well. You use a kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles. You can use a heat gun or an embosser. I would prefer the embosser because it doesn't blow out as much and move the elements around that are on your canvas or your glass. I do come back every 15 minutes after I'm done with the project and recheck it, check for bubbles, um, use the kitchen torch again to get rid of bubbles, make sure nothing's moved. I do get down eye level to see if I can see any sediment. Oftentimes I'll use a toothpick to remove sediment or move items around that have moved. 
and it is in your best interest to read the directions for the resin that you are using because all resins are different and it's also in your best interest to cover it with a dust cover. Here I am going over it again with the kitchen torch and then I take some snowflakes that I had actually picked up on Timu I believe and I'm putting those all over the project. I thought it just needed something a little bit extra to complete it. So after it had cured, I decided it needed something more. So I had gotten these candy cane ornaments from Hobby Lobby, uh, my little Christmas tree there for the small Christmas tree decorations. And I decided that I needed the red to be a darker red. So I took some glue and put it on all the red stripes and then I took glitter and sprinkled the glitter on top of the glue to make it a darker red and I actually ended up doing about 12 of these. Next I decided to add some miniature Christmas lights that I had picked up at Michael's and I attached these to the top of each of the carts um, working slowly from left to right adding one at a time with UV resin and putting the UV light onto it. Next, I started adding the candy canes, two to each cart, and I actually put a snowflake in between each of the candy canes. And then I actually used the candy cane to attach the carts to each other because my son had pointed out the carts aren't attached. <laughs> so anyway, I used candy canes for that also. And I also put candy canes up above Santa, but I did not have the camera on it when I did that. Hey everyone, hope you like my little uh, Christmas tree. So um, this really wasn't that hard to do. The hardest thing was trying to figure out what to put in here. I went up to Hobby Lobby and I bought a whole bunch of different little picks to put in the Christmas, you know, that you would put in a Christmas tree and kind of, um, it kind of held them up to see what I thought would look best. And I just think these are so whimsical and pretty. And uh, these little ornaments here, they're, they were really soft. You could just bend them. And that's why they were so easy to cut with the uh, scissors, with that heavy duty scissors. And then of course, when I was all done, well, when I was all done with it and I put the, um, the snowflakes on, I put some chunky glitter on it too, which I'm not sure if that was a mistake or not, but um, it kind of distorts the glass a little bit. Can you see the little, tiny chunky glitter. I thought it would look more like snowflakes in addition to the other snowflakes. So I don't know that I would do it again. You know, I still think it looks pretty. And then of course, after I was all done, um, I decided this looked too plain. And my son said, oh, you don't even have the, um, the train cars connected. <laughs> so anyway, that's when I decided to put the candy canes on. And of course the candy canes, the red was too light compared to the reds in this project so I put some uh, dark red glitter on with the glue which really was um, worked out well and um, added those and I did it with that UV resin and the UV resin um, is a resin if you don't know about UV resin it's a resin that you don't mix it's not a two-part resin it's just one part it's in a dark container you squirt it on and you put the UV light on it and it cures. Um, it doesn't cure instantly. It takes like two minutes, but after like 10, 15 seconds, it's held on there so that you can release your finger from it if, if you're trying to hold it in place and then you continue to cure it. So usually what I'll do is just um, do it for, you know, 30 seconds for each little piece and then go back and um, uh, put it over it for a minute and a half and just leave it there. That way I can walk away from it. But um, anyway, these uh, little lights here would have probably been difficult to keep on there with regular resin because they were kind of moving around a lot. But um, anyway, all in all, so the reason I decided to do the Christmas tree was on our Facebook page. Everybody's posting all, all different ideas, really cute ideas, but I didn't see anybody do a train. So I thought that would be something different because I didn't want to, you know, repeat what everybody else was doing. So um, anyway, all in all, I think it turned out cute. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did enjoy the project, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. If you enjoy the channel, go ahead and subscribe. The Facebook page is doing really well. Um, 
there's so many cool projects that people are posting and talking about and um, a lot of questions are being asked and answered. It's a great place to ask questions, especially if you're a newbie. I'm learning a lot. Um, come join us there and I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks for watching.